Hi, and welcome to today's Vulcan JS stream. And today you get to watch me basically just tidy everything up, uh, fix the styles, the layout, the internationalization, all the little things uh, that need to be fixed before this can be like released to the world. Now to recap, we are building an Airbnb clone and uh, we already have individual listing pages, we have a uh, search, um, we have filters, we have uh, a bunch of features, but it all looks a bit uh, ugly and a bit uh, unstructured, so we're gonna work on that today. Now where should we start? Well, um, how about the title of the site right here? Um, we should probably um, enter uh, an actual title for the project and uh, a tagline as well. So here I have a mockup for uh, my friend's site, which I'm building this for. You know, at least in part, and also to open source it. So, well, let's use this as the the title and tagline, and in header we'll uh, maybe add the tagline in here. Okay, so these two should probably be in the same uh, div. Um, We might want to make this uh, probably an H1. Okay, now um, let's bump down the, the font size a bit. Now I don't have a typography scale yet. So um, 2.5, let's say 2, yeah. So what else can we improve? Well, if we are thinking about this in the context of Airbnb, um, Airbnb here, uploading a property um, isn't really one of the main actions. So let me sign in first. Um, so I am not sure if we want to have that new room button here or rather if we want to put it in the user menu here. I think it mo makes more sense in the user menu. So again, I'm just trying to clean everything up so that it, it works and looks more like an actual uh, Airbnb-like site. Just going through uh, things as I think of them. So header here. Um, now, 
probably also want to give this its own uh, route because you know for a long form uh, this kind of lay layout in a pop-up is not super convenient because you might click away and then lose all your data by mistake so I don't think we want to do that and that would be here so let's say rooms new form Oh, we already have rooms new form uh, yeah um, okay let's create rooms new page which is basically gonna be a, a wrapper for uh, rooms new form so we have rooms dot search let's say room dot new Okay, and So super simple for now. And we'll add the link in uh, in users menu or um, yeah, users menu. So uh, if the user can create a new uh, room, so user can do room new, or I think it's rooms new, then um, link container to uh, room new and menu item, uh, we can leave that the same and rooms new here, we'll add the uh, Oh, we already have the, the right string. Uh, yeah, well, let's use this. All right. Okay, so now we have a, a dedicated page to create a new room. And by the way, um, quick reminder, how do we know that the current user can perform the rooms.new action? That's because here we have defined that uh, members, in other words, regular users can perform this action. And uh, you know the cool thing is if we want to change our permissions, maybe we only want to let um, uh, moderators or, or uh, ad, ad, not admins because that's already taken, but yeah, mods uh, or managers only they can do that action. We just remove it from here and give it to the other group, and this will uh, update or like behave the way we want to without us having to actually come in and change the UI. So by using these permissions, these actions you can uh, you know, change the way your app behaves without having to change the UI, which is pretty cool. So what else can we improve here? Um, yeah, that's not great. Like there's a few tweaks to, to do with that dropdown, but we can take a look later. For now, I feel like I need to bump down the, the font size for that a little bit. 
so form section heading title I can probably modify this straight in the forms package so that it works for um, just in general um, well, let's try Still feels a little big. Yeah, okay. Now, another thing I wanted to do is uh, uh, display this on multiple uh, columns. So, let me see here. You can see I have the. This is the class of that specific form uh, field, input amenities. So, this is kind of specific to the Airbnb clone project, so I'm not going to put it in the form style sheet, but I'm going to create a new forms scss file here. And so, so this is not a great class actually, um, but I don't think we can modify it. So. I guess we'll we'll use it. So uh, display flex, and then ch each checkbox, we're gonna give it. Uh, yeah, let's start like that. So is it doing anything? It is not doing anything and so let's see why is that? Okay, so that's refreshing. Import forms. Forms is right here. Okay, no. it's, it's working. Um, we also need to give it flex wrap wrap so it doesn't force everything on the same um, line. Yeah, looking better. And uh, we can probably do the same for spaces. So I'll just add this in here. Cool. Already better. Uh, we probably don't need to change this. So the photos, yeah, th that's something we do need to, to improve. Uh, let's find some random Airbnb photos we can reuse. By the way, if you're watching this, if you're hanging in the chat room, just say hello, um, just so I know who's watching. This is actually in Osaka. It looks, it looks nice. It looks very uh, and Japanese. It's oh, that that looks more like it. That's more Japanese style. I mean, yeah, having all wood walls like that. It's not typically Japanese. Usually, they use wallpaper. Uh, like here, but nah, looks not not my taste necessarily. It's a bit gloomy, but anyway, I guess that's not why you're watching this stream. Uh, so instead, what we want to do here is focus on the restyling this thing because that's pretty ugly. Um, so. We have this image drop down base thing here what's the structure upload field drop down base upload state so let's see we probably do we want to just display the images in line yeah that, that should be a good start 
So this time we're going to go to the forms upload package. Where is it? Right here. Let's see if it already has styles. It does. Okay, so flex direction. Um, yeah, I don't think we want a column. We just want a, a row actually. Well, okay, let's clear this out and see how it uh, how it looks. Um, right, so actually it would be images. Okay. Now the images div has like each image div, div has um, these two tags. Now it would be cool if this had a class. So uh, let's see if we can add one. Um, class name images, image. So let's see this image component right here. So Um, yeah, upload image, and this would be upload images. I guess I'll lose my uh, my form. Let's do this again. Okay, so upload images. We do want to display this as um, a row and not a column. And each of these, um, Okay, now it'd be nice if the remove image link was below, actually. I think that would make more sense. So again, let's modify our component. And um, Maybe we can uh, center everything. Okay. Starting to look a little bit better. What else can we improve? Um, we could add some margin in there. So each image should, should have margin right, um, maybe 10 px. And then we'll do the same for this drop zone base. Okay. Okay. Now it would also be nice if uh, the whole thing was aligned a bit better. Um, What would be the best way to do this? Well, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna lower the the font size on this actually. So this probably doesn't need to be that wide. Maybe a bit, a bit wider. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Now there might be more than two images, so let's um, 
let's maybe bump down the size of the images as well oh so right now their height is hard, hard coded should we hard code their width instead maybe so 180 um, How about doing this? Cool. Now uh, let's see what happens when we shrink down the Yeah, okay, so that's not great. Oops, sorry, mic trouble here. If, well, that filter is not super useful anyway. But. So uh, we probably need some uh, breakpoints in here, right? Now, I'm not sure if I have my... Um, Yeah, I don't actually have breakpoints. Yeah, that's probably something I'm gonna just leave for later because uh, it might be it might need some uh, thinking about how to which breakpoints to use, or is there a way to just make it be flexible or fluid? Uh, but something else I want to fix is uh, this uploading thing. So. So first of all, this should be, well, all of this should be internationalized, really. So. I'm actually going to use a single quote just to be consistent. And the other one is uh, right there, uploading, upload.uploading, and of course we have to import this. Cool, um, so we're still, we still have to decide how we display this uh, uploading notification. Div. Um, and I'm going to change this so it just displays like permanently, so it's easier to style. So maybe rather than uh, having it be in here, we could just change the text here, but that would also change the dimensions of the thing. So um, let, let's do this a bit differently. So we will put this I guess here. Uh, 
and then give this um, drop zone base position uh, relative and upload Um, so the idea is to just display it as an overlay. That's not too bad. Um, maybe change the um, the font size. Now we want to center it. There's some hacks to center stuff in CSS, but I think. The cleanest way to do it is to use Flexbox. Uh, align item or item center no. And I will add a, a, a span in here. Cool. Nice. Now, uh, let's replace this by, wait, I forgot what it was. Was it uploading? Uh, Git is always useful for that. Yeah, uploading. Cool, now there's one more issue, which is that when we do this, it uh, replaces the whole thing. And that's because um, we have two possibilities. Right, uh, we can either display the, the value of the field, so that being the actual images that have been uploaded, or the preview. And right now we have this like the image data equals preview or value. Uh, what we actually want to do is um, is display both. So um, so let, let's see what value looks like. So upload value, it's an array. So we want to add the preview to the array. So image data equals value push preview. And that should work, maybe? Let's see. Nope. So the first one is just empty, that, that makes sense. The second one is an empty array, which 
also makes sense because that's how we initialize it. Right, I forgot that there's also one more case which, okay, we have to test this first. Okay, this should actually be this. So our data, if, if we have enabled multiple images for this component, it will be value push preview or whatever works. If not, it will be value or preview. So as I said today, lots of uh, small things to clean up and improve, not like, not really a, a, a concrete theme like the other days. Oh, okay, yeah, no, it's not push, it's a uh, concat. Push actually mutates the original, and then I don't know what it returns, like one, uh, but what we want here is concat. Um, now, of course, we don't have either a value or a preview. Uh, so we end up with this. So that's not what we want, actually. Um, obviously, we don't want to... Like, in this case, we want to return an empty array if there is no preview and no value. Um, Okay, so we want to do preview. If there is a preview, then concat it, else we just return value. And then, uh, yeah, that should work. So let's see, we have our preview here. Now it will, oops, we'll add a second one. And we have our preview. And then once it's actually uploaded, uh, instead of being in the in state.preview, it's available in state.value, but it's basically the same information, more or less. So it's the same image. So um, you actually don't see any change now. If we wanted to make this even nicer, maybe we could show a loading spinner on the preview image. How can we do that? Well, that would be an image. For a start, we would do this. Um, so there is a spinner. Uh, it's possible that I don't have any uh, styles for that spinner in my app, like, at all. So uh, let's, let's get some. Now, yeah, obviously, those styles should be uh, included with the, the com spinner component, but for now, uh, that's not how it works. So, yeah, I need to... No, it's actually here. Yeah, for now it's just regular uh, CSS, as CSS. Ideally, this would be like hmm, maybe included with uh, style components. This way, we could collocate the oh undefined variable. Okay. This way, we could collocate everything together. Uh, there's lots of improvements we could uh, we could do to make everything nicer, but you know for now, let's do what works. Okay, so we're gonna take this 
spinner thing, we're actually gonna um, do the same thing we just did. Upload spinner or loading. Upload loading. We're gonna um, we're gonna give this upload image position relative this one position. You know what? I'll just copy copy that stuff. And uh, yeah, that should do the trick. Perfect. Now it's not quite centered because there's the remove image thing. Um, right. So maybe we do it like this. image contents this side save and then Now the other part of the equation is deciding when to show that loading or not. So there should be a condition here. We can't just say uploading because uh, then whenever we're uploading something, it would add that spinner to every image. So it has to be a prop passed to that specific image. So we'll do this. And now preview, where is our preview coming from? Um, file zero dot preview. So this is an array. We're pushing this. We're pushing this file zero dot preview to the array. We are uh, gonna change this a bit. So we'll say preview equal. Preview preview dot loading calls true, and we can do this. Now I'm not sure exactly um, what the value preview has, but hopefully this will work. Because I think the pre each preview object should be, be passed to the image component. So if we put loading on that, you know, it should work. So it's not working. Um, so here you, we can see that we have a clear image, image index. Oh, I guess it would be this props image dot loading then. Okay, so how can we pass? Oh, okay. Now that, that that makes sense, actually, because preview is just a string. So this is a 
or uh, yeah, it, it's uh, the the URL of the preview image. So we want to pass. I guess we could test if the URL includes blob. It's not super clean. We could also pass a separate. Yeah, hmm. I think actually a cleaner way to do this would be to um, to pass an image object with the same format as the final image object. So so this is a bit complex because this component supports both a single image an array of images and and an image itself can have multiple formats so there's four uh, separate use cases so this has to accept um, that's why there's this get, get image URL if image is actually an array of formats use first format and so on so um, in this case it wouldn't be an array of format, but we want to use secure URL instead. So instead of saying const preview equals this, we'll say const preview equals this. So this will be treated as an object containing a URL where loading is set to true. Okay, okay, not quite. Oh, yeah, okay. And it's on image at loading. Cool. That looks pretty good to me. So uh, let's call it done for now. And uh, move on to something else. So I think this form is looking, you know, okay. We might want to create some kind of uh, layout for pages so they just don't, don't stretch the whole width of the screen. So um, here, where's our page? rooms new page let's just say class name equal page and uh, here in global let's try something like that cool So I think this is pretty good for now. Um, so maybe this could be the page title. H2. And uh, so I'll take it out from the form. And let's say we want to give this a nice underline. Mm. 
Okay, cool. Maybe it's a bit more spacing. What do you think? Yeah. So that lo that's looking much better. Now we also need to fix this form here. The reason why it looks so weird is uh, because these two form fields are using the... Um, Oh, right, no, it's the opposite. This one is using all the bootstrap classes and these two are not. I'm not sure. So this would be room search form. Yeah, because this is using input. Uh, what's the best solution? Well, if we look back to our mockup, this is going to be like some kind of inline form with its own design. So we don't really need that bootstrap stuff. Uh, so I'll disable it. And I think there's a property you can pass. Um, layout I think you can do layout element only Okay, and that means we can now just give it the same um, Now again, we want to internationalize everything. So let's uh, go formatted message. Let's go through that routine again. So um, to and from Cool, now let's use a flexbox to display all of this in line, like in the in the mockup. So form horizontal. And yeah, it's in room search form. So here. Display flex. Um, Okay, these guys could probably benefit from having a class. Um, field maybe, yeah. So I think we can do flex one. 
And actually, yeah, let's not do that. Okay, so that's looking somewhat similar. That search button is a little bit small. Submit. And it would be nice to also uh, have it aligned. So what's the best way to do that? We can probably do something like this. Yeah, actually, let's do it here. Um, So we want to align ch children of this this uh, element to the bottom. Um, or is it justify? Yeah, justify content. Okay. Now maybe we actually also want to give um, some kind of max width to that uh, global, that main layout. So instead of giving it here, I'll do that. Okay. Um, what do we do with this thing? We'll probably want to um, work on our component here to display a single um, room. Which is this one right here, rooms item. So again, let's refer back to our mockup. So we have the image, price, um, name, and city image price name city so four things to display and i guess yeah link everything to the room itself so we can assume all the rooms are going to have a photo yeah i think So we'll have a, a link and uh, we'll also have the price. And then below this we'll have Uh, we'll have the name and what was the, the last thing the city So this could be like maybe an h3 I think you can put uh, h 
whatever inside uh, inside links. I think that's okay. Price per night. So we'll want to use the position relative position absolute trick to position the price on top of the photo. So I don't think I've actually given any of these rooms a price yet, so let's do that. Okay. You can see how it's actually starting to look like a real site, right? Just like centering things in the page. And I mean, you know, it's Vulkan, so it's all React, so it, it's pretty quick. Like, if you had to do the same operation on a, on like a Rails app, even if your app was super fast, like, it would still take a while to just load every page and click through and so on, so pretty cool. One more. Okay, now we have our prices. Let's drop the, the card class because we don't need it anymore. And we're gonna style this stuff individually. So um, this will have um, position relative, then So just like I did before, I'm gonna wrap it in a span just to have more control over the, the position. So we let's say this is a display flex um, justify contents flex and and um, flex direction columns, this will align the span to the bottom. Uh, we want to display this as a color white, so we want to have a small gradient. Well, no, actually, this should be zero. And we probably want to, um, what's the syntax for this? Like, is it zero percent and fifty percent? I always forget the syntax for gradients. Okay, so the okay that comes next. So no, that's not it's not right. So maybe I need to do this. Okay. 
think so we want to can't really tell <laughs> yeah okay let's let's uh okay yeah no, it's working so we want a uh, black gradient only on the bottom half of our image and the price will be in white so we just need to do flex direction column text align center and uh, justify contents flex and or actually uh, where's the mock-up yeah no it's a line on the left I mean it doesn't really matter but you know we might as well cool and maybe we'll stop this a bit earlier okay uh. and it says per night so we will um, do that so rooms per night Okay, um, then we can maybe, um, well, first of all, let's display, oh, I guess this is a span too, so uh, let's not use a span for this. Uh, we want to display this on a grid, so let's use Flexbox again. So, rooms. You know what, let's call it a rooms grid. That's not the right one. I guess I have two room li rooms list components now. Uh, yeah, rooms grid. Okay. So I think uh, CSS grids might be better here, but um, haven't actually looked into them yet. Uh, I think you have to escape this. So rooms grid display flex.
Oh, none of that. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, we probably don't need to set a max width on the image because it's. Oh, sorry. No, we don't need a max width, but we do need to do. Wait. Oh, they both have the same. Uh, okay. So I'll. Uh, I'll change that. Um, I'm going to go back to my home page and um, I'm going to give this the, the page title style or class name. And uh, let's bump down the, the font size for this. So in uh, room item, um, room item name and city. Maybe I haven't given them names yet or classes. Let's check. Yeah. Now I I like to always use um plural actually. Just remove any ambiguity. So I think it's safer to always have it be rooms, plural. Uh, did I miss something? Probably. No. Oh, I got this one. Okay. Okay, so it's interesting that one image is not the same size as the others. I guess we should fix this um, in our image upload step. Wonder if there's anything we can do here though. I'm not aware of an easy way to just tell one image to fit the size of the other in the in the flex box grid. So we would have to hard code the image size, which I don't really want to do right now. So I guess we'll leave it. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is give a bit of margin here. Yeah. You know what, I'll just delete that one.
Oh, that looks so much better compared to where we started from. It's, it's still just bootstrap. It's not, you know, visually pleasant or anything, but at least you can kind of understand what's going on. It looks like something now. So the next step would be taking care of this page. Uh, I'll probably stop for now and maybe do it later today or, or tomorrow because there's a bit of work here as well. But, you know, I'm pretty happy with uh, the way it's taking shape. So um, thanks for watching and see you very soon for the next step in building our Airbnb clone.